<laughs> My dog is barking. <laughs> I don't know why. So, Leaf, we're live now? We're live. Okay, so we don't see anybody. We just see each other, but we... Okay, great. Well, okay, welcome, everyone, to this uh, performance that Serena Huang and I did with the Heart Orchestra. This is back now before Thanksgiving. My dog is... Back. And uh, uh, I'm going to turn over to Serena for a month while I try to shut up my dog. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is something that we did together. Um, okay, welcome everyone to the performance that performance that Long and I did with the Heart Orchestra. This is back now, back now, giving. Wait, I see. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, this is something that we did back in November uh, with the students and everything. So this is, yeah, and kind of spent some time editing the video and now we finally have it. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, this is something that we did back in November uh, with the students and everything. So this is, yeah, and kind of spent some time editing the video, and now we finally have it. Um, okay. Yeah, um, this is something that we did back in November uh, with the students and everything. So this is, yeah, and kind of. Um, so I need to get out of okay. the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, this is something that we YouTube. did back in November uh, with the YouTube. students and everything. So this is, yeah, and kind of. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I, I needed to make sure that I got rid of the, the proper one. Okay, my apologies. All right. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So when I when I when I asked Serena if she would be willing to do this with us, I was so pleasantly surprised to learn that she was in the process of preparing it for the Waterbury Symphony, uh, and she did it with with the with that orchestra in uh, in September, and so she was raring to go once we started preparing it with her uh, in November, and um, and was this Serena was this. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure that you've you've worked on the seasons for you know a, a good part of, of your career thus far. But uh, have you was this the first time you ever with Waterbury and then with the Hard Rocks? The first time you'd ever performed the whole work? Uh, yeah, this is the first time. Exactly, this is the first time um, that I had a chance to play all of it because previously I had played with orchestra autumn and spring. So fall and winter were, I mean, I've played it before, but not with orchestra. So it, it basically felt new to me. Um, and because this kind of piece, I mean, playing it with orchestra is so different. I mean, you're so, my part is so much uh, embedded in the orchestra part and vice versa. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it was really a really exciting experience for me to be able to play through all of it and with the wonderful students at heart. I'm surprised that this was the first time you'd ever done winter because I know winter is one of your favorites. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that one, that one's I think is probably the yeah one of my favorites. I think it's written uh, the most exciting in my opinion. So, um, but yeah, that is my first time playing that basically. What are some of the unique challenges in in playing Vivaldi? I mean, it's obviously it's it's unlike uh, other concertos in that there are twelve movements to it right. and, uh, and it's it's actually a, a, a 
four concertos all in one. What, what What's it like preparing this as opposed to, say, preparing a Sibelius or a Beethoven concerto? What, what are some of the similarities and what are some of the differences? Well, I think one thing that's quite difficult about Vivaldi is um, if you really have to tap into your creativity because, um, or you have to be able to interpret the how the music relates to the text because he does write text above, um, you know, every section of the piece, but you have to be able to figure out how this phrase sounds like slipping on ice, you know, and really be able to, to pace it, time it, articulate it in a way that sounds visual. And I think that that's so different because from Sibelius Concerto, Tchaikovsky, you don't get texts um, along with what your part is. So this adds a whole new layer of creativity, interpretation, understanding to the music um, that is not that common um, for my repertoire. A, a good point, good point. Um, in, in, in winter in particular, you asked um, all of us to play at a certain part uh, towards the bridge. Can you explain to the audience how the strings got this really strange and eerie sound and what 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 that was? Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that, again, it's like, you know, when some, you know, <laughs> because the text said, you know, it's, you're slipping on ice, it's very cold. Um, when I say that we have to be as creative as possible, I actually added uh, a sound effect basically um, called Ponticello, um, which is basically playing with very little amount of pressure, but very close to the bridge. And what ends up happening is that there's like a sandy sound to it and um, it creates an icy, icy sound. Um, not, it's not very solid, um, so it, to me, that sounds very cold. <laughs> and um, so basically, yeah, based on the text, you want to see how will the sound, how will the music best serve this text? Um, so I, I added um, that sound effect, not just for my part, but also for the entire orchestra so that we are all doing that effect at the same time. Um, so ho hoping that that'll uh, kind of get the message across. There was another thing you asked us to do, which which I'd never done before in, in other performances. Even uh, um, I'm surprised that Sarah Chang didn't ask me to do this one. I did this with her in Heart for Symphony. But you asked all of us to play pizzicato in, in one section, but not like a typical pizzicato, but more like Bartok a pizz gunshot pizzicato. Yeah, I mean, again, no again Copeland, that Copeland Ballet, that, that where he writes, uh, I, I forget, from Rodeo, I think, or from, from Billy the Kid, where he actually yeah. has percussion yeah. playing. And sometimes strings can be percussion. Exactly. Like that, this is another example of, you know, um, interpreting the text uh, in, in what he wrote, because that section in Autumn, in the last movement, um, it's supposed to be gunshots, um, killing the beast. So, if we just play it um, with pits, uh, it could sound kind of dainty or you know too polite. And somehow I want it to sound kind of like, yeah, something more wild, more dangerous sounding. So doing something like a Bartok pits gives like an audible snap to the sound. And I feel like that best uh, imitates that kind of mood, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, because the pizzicato, they're not just doing this. Right. With the You're string. pulling the string so high up and then releasing it so it snaps against the fingerboard. Um, yeah. yeah, creating that snapping sound. Another thing that was unusual about this uh, performance recording at Serena was that um, in, uh, since we did this in, during the pandemic, obviously we were all, we were all masked, was that uh, we, we needed to use four different orchestras. I mean, obviously there were some players that played in, in more than one ensemble, but uh, so you were playing with four different continuo cellists. You had one with Max, one with Zach, one with Kevin, and one with Veronica. 
And uh, can you talk about what, what, what that was like for you having to establish a rapport with, with the, the four different uh, soloists in those concerts? Yeah. Well, first of all, I was really impressed with all four of them. I think they played so well and um, it was such a pleasure to work with them because they were so dedicated um, and had just a really great um, sense of timing and um, just, I felt like we were really playing chamber music together and that I didn't have to, you know, coach them or anything. I mean, obviously we rehearsed one-on-one, -on -one, um, but I felt like they had a really great um, sense of the musical timing. So it, it was easy on my end. Uh, I just really enjoyed working with them um, throughout the whole rehearsal process. Um, but basically there, yeah, there's a lot of sections where it's, um, just us alone. And so we spent some time outside of rehearsal, um, just kind of rehearsing our part alone and talking about where the peaks are in the phrase, how we want to do the different dynamics, different crescendos, diminuendos, and in a way that we are completely aligned um, because we want it to sound like a dialogue, you know, and we want to make it sound as cohesive as possible. You also had a separate rehearsal with Bobby, uh, the violist. Yeah, uh, the, the barking dog. dog. <laughs> dog barking. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, <laughs> um, I think that part is honestly like, I, great job to Bobby because that is a very intimidating and exposing part. Um, I know from many violists that complain about that part because it's like every note you play is just like everybody hears you so well. Um, but basically I rehearsed with Bobby because I wanted to get as much of that barking sound as possible. So I we were, you know, experimenting with different bowings. Um, if we, if he did up, down, then it sounds kind of elegant in a way. And I didn't want it to sound elegant because you're a barking dog. Um, so I had him do down, down, bump, bump, and to get a bite at the beginning of each uh, stroke. So that again, there is a little bit more articulation and more energy and less elegant. Um, and it kind of just, at certain parts it's supposed to sound kind of rude. You know, I'm trying to play like a beautiful melody here and then there's like a barking dog just <laughs> going crazy. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, again, like this is trying to interpret the text and the music and trying to best, um, you know, yeah, to, to best execute that. So yeah, we were trying to play with different bowings and I think we came up with certain parts doing down, down and certain parts doing up, down where we don't want him to sound too rude. So we save it for the really rude parts, you know? So a little bit of a variety too. So that's the, that's just, yeah, yeah something that we had to work on and experiment. Uh, you also had a, uh, a separate rehearsal with uh, um, Marika and with Juliana in that, uh, the trio that you, you share. Talk a little bit about that trio that you have with them in, in, in spring. Yeah, um, that was also a lot of fun. So. I, I love that part, I love the way it's written. It just sounds like, it really sounds like birds um, just chirping. And um, the, the key thing about, I mean, just technically speaking is to kind of, we try to match our sounds as, as well as we can so that nobody's sound is particularly different. If we were using the same part of the bow, we had the similar color um, so that it should just sound like there are three birds, but same, we want the same type of bird <laughs> so that it really just um it just all kind of morphs together um tech, you know as an audience when you're listening you shouldn't be able to tell okay now is the first violin playing now it's uh now it's the soloist playing you know it should really sound like everyone is is just like a symphony of chirps <laughs> i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah yeah you know I, i'm sure there's some people listening who have been watching your your career for some time, but there might be some people out there who are hearing you for the first time. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and and uh, and how you came to play the violin? What what? How old were you when you started? And just kind of give us a little bit of a uh, an idea of how this this all started for yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Um, so 
Heart, heart school has been my home since I was four years old <laughs> because um, I moved to Connecticut when I was four and my older sister was the first one to take lessons at heart. She played piano um, and I would go to her lessons with her and be really intrigued <laughs> in the lessons and my mom who was also in the lesson saw the way I reacted and asked if I wanted some lessons. And at the time, I think she asked um, for some piano lessons for me. And then I think they said that my hands were a little small, so it could be good to um, start violin lessons because they come in smaller sizes. Um, and that's basically how I started. Um, so this wasn't I, anything like, I want to play the violin. Just You had smaller hands. Um, yeah, it was a little, kind of a coincidence in a way because it just like... I mean, I liked the sound of the violin, but at the same time, I just wanted to learn some kind of musical instrument, honestly. <laughs> um, but I mean, I fell in love with it like immediately. Uh, but yeah, so I started when I was four, I studied with Linda Fiore, um, who was teaching at Hart then. And um, yeah, I think I was her um, demo student for her, um, her training class for training for Suzuki teachers. Um, so yeah, anyway, that just, it all just happened that way. And um, I went to their community division until I was nine, I would say. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. And to me, yeah, Heart has always been like my musical home because that's where I started. That's where the first concert I ever played in my life was at Heart. Um, the first time that I had a chance to play with other musicians was also at Heart. So lots of first times for me there. And so I always remember Heart as my home. Yeah, and, and certainly more to come as well. So um, you're, um, even though you're just, you know, you're still a, a babe, you know, in the woods, you know, with still in just like only in your mid twenties, uh, I look at you as a veteran because I remember like it was yesterday, my first time performing with you when you were, I think, 11 years old and you did the finale of the Brook by <laughs> the concerto. Right, uh, right. In New Britain, it was for a, it was at a youth concert uh, and uh, a number of members of the Hartford Symphony came up to me after your performance and said, you know, Edward, we would love to have Serena come back and play with us anytime. We just love. So, and they weren't talking to me like we want this young violinist because she's, she's cute and she's adorable and she plays well. They were, they were already looking at you as a serious violinist. And this is like a half of lifetime ago for you. And, um, and of course you've performed many times, you know, with Hartford Symphony since, and of course, and you did this marvelous recital at heart on the Garmini series. I guess this would be now just a little bit over a year ago now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. so what, what are some of the things on the horizon for you now? What are some of the things that you really want to do? Some things you know are coming uh, uh, your way, but things that you really uh, hope, hope to be, uh, to uh, either pieces that you want to add to your repertoire or, 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 or other projects that you're looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, you know, thinking, thinking about, you know, projects that I want to do in the future, something like what we did here with Vivaldi was really fun for me because I, we had a chance to really dive into the work and work in depth with the students. And um, that is something I really like doing is to not, I mean, of course, performing is always my greatest passion, but also working with other musicians is really inspiring for me. So I actually, I learned a lot in this process, working with the students. Um, I'm gonna jump in for a moment because yeah. to, because what Serena is talking about too, is that usually when she performs with a professional orchestra, there might be one rehearsal, then a dress rehearsal, and then that's it. Exactly, it so this give is you, really different. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really give you a chance to really dive into the work like we did over the course of two weeks with the Vivaldi. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, usually, like, yeah, exactly. Like what you're saying, we have a dress rehearsal and the day before the dress rehearsal, we have like one rehearsal. So in total, on average, maybe two rehearsals. And 
um, each one being maybe half an hour long, you play through the concerto once, you know. Um, so uh, this was a special experience because we got to discuss musical ideas and experiment with different musical ideas. And I'm working with musicians that are so dedicated and really want to create something really great. Um, and speaking of that, uh, I, I still think it's amazing that we recorded all this in one day and we had four, <laughs> we had four rehearsals, which I found um, really awesome because we really got a chance to um, dive deep into this work, but also I felt like it would have been even more fun if we had another four rehearsals after that or two days to record or something like that. I think it's really impressive how we were able to put it all together in four, four rehearsals and one day of recording. Cause this piece is, there's just so much happening everywhere. And it just, um, there was just so much concentration and dedication in the record on the recording day. I remember it very well. Yeah. And we were able to pull it together and, just, I don't know, a couple hours or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, 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 and we, we, it turned out that we selected mainly the rehearsals that we had added in the evening because we had, a, a, you know, several, we had like three hours in the afternoon and then we had yeah. two and a half more hours in the evening. And we, we selected because in part, because we just, you know, I think also the people who were doing the recording, you know, Lee Simmons and all of his, uh, the people, uh, with the, with his recording company, uh, they were they had like the whole afternoon to kind of figure out what it was all about and to know where to point the camera because they could never fail by pointing the camera at you. That was <laughs> that was a given. But for you know, getting the the cello soloist, getting the the, the violin soloist, getting Bobby, you know, for yeah. his dog barks, and uh, and also just getting other players, you know, it, who, who were part of the process. That was. To yeah. talk, talk a little bit about that. I mean, because that was that was a new experience for me, I know. But talk a little bit about what we did the the, the whole month of, of December. Um, putting, yeah. Putting this, um, the, the video editing of the process. Yeah, the video editing is really, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, like, so many things to consider and things that I just never even thought about like when you look at a video you just you're just watching but you don't realize that every frame some so, you know someone's behind it thinking what they want to be in the center and which camera they want to use for what part I mean there's so much deciding uh that takes place when editing and it's just I mean it was so much more than I would have predicted. Um, and it was really cool to be part of the process. Um, every, you know, with, with solos, um, you know, we had to choose, we had, I think five cameras in total to choose from. Um, so each camera had its own angle. So depending on musically speaking, uh, what we want to highlight, uh, we want the visual portion to match the music. So um, it was like a, little, I don't know, it, I don't know, it may be like a small version of a music video of sorts, um, trying to get the visual part to enhance the music, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, trying trying to actually get the picture to help the audience listen to what needed to be listened at that very moment. Yeah, yeah, so lots of deciding that you and I had to make, <laughs> yeah. Some tough choices. I yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> So um, this is the, the first time that Serena and I have done anything like this. So I'm going to ask the host, uh, Leaf, who's, who's standing by, if, if, if there have been any questions that have submit, been submitted to him through the, the chat. I don't know. But um, if there have been questions submitted, we certainly would like to, to take some of those if, if they have come. Oh, OK. All right. Well, please uh, let us know uh, if, if they do, uh, if you do. Thank you, Leif. Um, so um, coming out of the pandemic now, uh, uh, what, 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 what do things look like for you, like in, just in the, in the next year or so? Um, a lot of concerts are getting, you know, that were supposed to happen this year 
are getting postponed for the next season. Um, and for, I mean, for the remaining of this season, I'll still be doing some virtual masterclasses and concerts. Um, I am doing an in-person concert uh, in Tennessee, um, playing Carmen Fantasy. So that's going to be an interesting adventure. <laughs> oh, wow, great. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be my first time playing with orchestra for this piece. So. Which, which orchestra in Tennessee? Jackson Symphony. Oh, great. Super. Yeah. Very so. good. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, I think concerts are going to be resuming. Um, f actually, on the topic of, of Hartford Symphony, I'm hoping that maybe next season we'll have to we'll get a chance to play the Butterfly Lovers Concerto, which we were supposed to do this past February. And I think they're considering doing it for the next season. Um, and that, yeah, so that's going to be really exciting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, I, maybe it's a little hard to, a little soon to know exactly what it's going to look like in the coming months, but, you know, just going with the flow and trying my best to uh, stay connected with people with music. Because <laughs> I realized one of the things that we benefited from was the fact that the Sibelius violin competition was canceled and therefore you were able to do this with us. <laughs> right. Otherwise, actually, in November, I would have, yeah, I would have been out of country. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah, so. I mean, it worked out well when you when you messaged me. Um, I was in Connecticut. I couldn't go anywhere anyway. And this was such a treat because it just worked out so well. And I was able to um, play with great musicians during a difficult time. So is that, is that going to take place again? I mean, are they are they planning to do it this year or another year? The Sibelius competition? Um, I think that actually got pushed to 2020. Two. Okay. So that's maybe a little more than a year from now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's feeling more and more like most orchestras are going to getting closer to normal by the fall of 2022. You know, yeah. That, that this next year is going to be just gradually coming Good. back into things. Yeah. Right. This is uh, just a couple of weeks, actually just last week, the Heart Orchestra was a full orchestra for the first time in 13 wow. months. That's really exciting. <laughs> and it was everybody spread out. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, the brass and timpani are practically in the outfield, you know, and they're having to play a lot stronger than they would normally play because otherwise yeah. they feel like they're screaming. And, and we Yeah, can't. I mean, that's another um, interesting thing that, you know, I had to learn with the pandemic. Also with um, this, this Vivaldi, people, everybody was spread out quite a bit. So trying to, uh, especially people in the back, you know, trying to be completely on time and even despite some of the acoustic delays and whatnot, just to always be be there is, that's a new challenge that I think normally we wouldn't have to face. Um, and so that just requires like all that much more concentration. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, this, this has been really fabulous. I mean, not just hearing this piece again with you and, and talking with you, but just remembering what the experience was like in November, rehearsing this with you. And, and you were so gracious with us throughout the whole process and the students all adore you. They will, we'll make sure that you get to work with us again sometime. And, I, and of course you and I are cooking something up, you know, for, for right. sure, which we, uh, we, we look forward to bringing to the to the public, um, right. but um, but just I just can't thank you enough for uh, for your, your 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 just your, your not just your expertise but your your graciousness as as a just a very gifted not just violinist but musician and human being and um, I know I speak for the students when they uh in, in saying that we all really really look forward to to making music with you again thank you thank you so much this was such a pleasure for me all right okay thank you all for joining in and uh we hope to do this with you again sometime soon all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.